Three days after Charles Vallow was shot and killed, Chad Daybell sent Lori some pretty steamy texts. Chad Daybell was also married at the time to his wife Tammy Daybell, you know, his wife of 29 years and the mother of his five children. And at the time of these texts, Lori hadn't quite found out yet that she wasn't going to be a million dollars richer by Charles Vallow's insurance. I'll be reading you Chad's story that he texted to Lori. And the story first begins when he met Lori in St. George, Utah at a Preparing a People event. And he also talks about the months that follow. Now he's changed the names in his text, but the events line up to him and Lori. I'll connect some dots as well as per usual. Now. Just a little word of warning. I hope you haven't eaten prior to watching this video as you may see this food come back up. I'm not joking. If you're currently eating, you may want to set that aside. This is a word of warning. Your stomach will turn at Chad's selection of his words. Don't say I didn't tell you so. With that being said, this story contains some pretty spicy content. Listener discretion is advised. On July 13th at 10.08 PM, Chad sends Lori a quick text message first. It says, I'm heading to bed so that I can come snuggle tightly against you. I adore you. You are truly my best friend on earth and throughout eternity. See you in a minute. Heart emoji, heart emoji, heart emoji, kiss emoji, kiss emoji, kiss emoji, fire, fire, fire emoji. This was dated in July, which means it was three months before Tammy Daybell died. So Chad would be heading to bed to snuggle tightly against Lori, but he'd be hopping into bed with Tammy. The Chandler Police Department released the detailed information on Chad's text, and the document says, On July 14, 2019, I noticed that Chad began to write Lori a story that was sent in many text messages throughout the day. The story seemed to be a romance novel of sorts about them, but the names were changed to James and Elena. In future text messages, Chad and Lori would refer to each other as James and Elena or Raphael and Lily. The following is the story that I observed between email and text messages. The text is just as it appeared in the messages and has not been corrected for grammatical errors. Note, I will also read it as is. As for the names, James and Elena might sound familiar to you as Chad had included them in his zombie rubric, AKA his hit list as I call it. Chad believed he was James the Just and married to Elena. He also believed, according to his zombie chart, that they had seven kids together, including JJ and Melanie Boudreau slash Pulowski. Now, James the Just was a brother of Jesus and one of the leaders of the early Christian community in Jerusalem. He was also known as James the Righteous. And Elena is the daughter of Jesus's half-brother Judas, who's married to James the Just. Now, I just did a little bit of a chart trying to see like, wait a minute, who goes where? That would be the uncle husband, Elena marrying James the Just. It's very interesting. Now to the texts. So Chad and Lori met in October of 2018 in St. George, Utah at a Preparing a People event. Now, Melanie Gibb and Lori were already thick as thieves at this time. They had met two weeks before and they drove together from Arizona to see Chad speak and he was selling his books there as well. Lori had been reading Chad's books for quite some time at this point, in fact, the last few years. And it was said that she was obsessed with Chad's books and his teachings. And Charles Vallow noted that he started seeing a change in Lori in 2018 and a few people mentioned this as well. So Chad's story begins the day he met his precious Lori back in October of 2018. Here we go. Friday morning, October 26, driving south on the freeway, a voice said, you will meet an extraordinary woman today who will change your life forever. This was shocking since such a thing seemed very unlikely at this conference. It is actually a very detailed story that began long ago on another world, and I will cover that part as I go along and the characters figure things out. But on the morning of October 26th, James arrived in St. George, still a bit baffled by the message he had received. He unloaded his books and set up his table, then joined the organizers for dinner in the main room. He saw his friend MG, Melanie Gibb, who had been so helpful to him when he spoke in Mesa that July. MG introduced James to her friend Elena. When their hands touched, he felt a shock pass through him and his heart started beating fast. 
Elena was gorgeous and vivacious, and James was a little intimidated yet honored that she would talk to him. He was happily surprised when she mentioned a key part of his novel, The Renewed Earth. No one had ever recognized the significance of the scene before. He had heard that voice before and seen that smile before. He felt they had even talked like this before, but who could be certain when? It was strange, but he could remember. The feelings were very strong, as if they had known each other oh so long. They didn't get many chances to talk after that because he had to help voice a woman's blue Muppet. Tell me what your thoughts are on that line in the comments below. But he watched her every chance he could. He had to stay at a relative's house that night, but he hardly slept. He kept envisioning himself with Elena in very wonderful situations that indicated they had been more than just friends. James was the first speaker on Saturday morning and knew exactly where Elena was sitting. He made sure to mention the scene from his book that they had discussed the previous evening. He was completely smitten by her and even was nervous of what she would think of his talk as he spoke. But when he would glance at her, she was always attentive and watching him, unlike the rest of the crowd. After his talk, he went to his book table. His talk had gone well and there was a good group gathered around to buy books. His heart nearly leaped out of his chest when Elena joined him and helped sell the books. She was so beautiful that he could hardly concentrate on the customers. She straightened the books and gave the books great reviews, although she made him laugh a lot when she kept pushing the youth and fifth volumes of his first series. He could only giggle when people asked if she was his wife because yes, in fact she was, she just didn't know it yet. But yeah, I already have one, remember Chad? James was definitely having amorous feelings toward Elena as they sold books together. He had not felt this happy in his entire life. He was quite sure this was the woman the voice had told him about. James was ecstatic because he had already fallen deeply in love with her. Or better said, he remembered how much he already loved her. Her eyes had mesmerized him from the moment they met, but once the book sales slowed down, she stood near him behind the table. They looked deeply into each other's eyes for the first time, and he knew he was in the presence of a goddess. He resisted an impulse to kiss her, but his entire body was on fire. He instinctively knew she was everything he had ever dreamed of. I must clarify that James is a very difficult person to get information from. He has been blessed with great knowledge, but 99% of the people he knows do not realize that. He is very guarded, and it is a great task to gain his trust. But as Elena leaned forward him and asked a couple of very insightful questions, his heart burst with joy. He knew she was the one, if the very few people on earth he could trust. Sounds like a little manipulation here. James' spirit was so excited at this revelation that he shattered a thick veil that had been placed between these two souls during their mortal lives. The thick veil had been placed because of the unique, unparalleled love James and Elena had shared in previous lifetimes. That veil had prevented them from finding each other until his appointed day that would be remembered throughout the heavens as the true beginning of a spectacular mission that would save millions of souls and defeat the forces of darkness. James' physical attraction to Elena was almost overwhelming, but he was equally drawn to the spiritual energy that was radiating from her. As they talked, it was confirmed to him that they indeed been married before and were eternal companions. He had glimpses of them walking dusty paths together and he realized they had been married during the life of Jesus Christ and they had been very close to him. Now note, Chad said that they were married several lifetimes before, aka several probations. And Melanie Gibb mentioned this in an interview with Nate Eaton. And also it was mentioned that Chad told Lori that uh, right away when they met that they had been, uh, you know, husband and wife before. I had joked many times in the past about being such a bad pickup line when, you know, Lori first meets Chad and um, what that would have been like for a normal person. It was like round up the friends, we're leaving. Here's where we start getting a little spicy. At this time, their spirits could not be restrained any longer and a long-awaited makeout session took place in that lobby. This was manifest in the mortal world to James and Elena through this scientific phenomenon known as loin fire. So cringy. 
As they talked, James had a burning desire to make love to her, but he wasn't sure she felt the same way. But they could not stay away from each other. One time she was sitting in a couch near his table and he took a seat on a chair about five feet from her. She began to squirm and covered her body with her hands. She asked him, what are you doing? He wasn't aware of what she meant. All he knew was that if Bruce Porter, who hadn't been giving them the evil eye, a child would have been conceived on that couch. Now, I wonder if this hands all over the body was the famous million dollars richer line. Do you remember that? Lori, while she was in jail, there was another inmate who stayed with her for four days or so, and they were talking about bailing out. And the inmate said, every day she's going out with her lawyers, and I'd say, are you bonding out? She would say, I hope so. And she says, I remember one of those meetings. She ran her fingers from her head down her body and said, we'll see if all this is worth one million. Same. The erotic tension continued throughout the afternoon. James could only think of her. His desire for her was indescribable. Thankfully, she had worn 16 layers of clothing to survive the 80 degree weather. So he was not fully aware that she truly had the body of a goddess. Her dimensions were exactly what he had always fantasized about, but that revelation would have to wait a month. As the night concluded, James needed to take his empty boxes to his car. With Elena's help, he had sold more books at a show than he ever had before. She helped him carry the boxes to the car and then he could not resist the desire to hug her. He made an awkward attempt that was way too brief because their friends were bringing more boxes. In that short embrace though, he knew he had found the woman he had searched for his entire life. It was made crystal clear to him that they had been married before and would be again. He once again had to fight off a powerful urge to kiss her and somehow disguise the massive erection he was experiencing. I think I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Told you it was spicy. They returned to the building and he helped carry tables to the second floor while she sat on the couch. They couldn't take their eyes off each other. He was already madly in love. Her group of friends finally had to leave. He was devastated. Unused, I think it meant unsure, how he would ever contact her again. Then her spirit took over and asked him, can I get your cell number in case I have some questions? They exchanged numbers and then they gave each other a hug goodbye. It was the most wonderful, electric, delicious hug he had ever felt. Then he watched her walk away, knowing she was truly going to change his life forever. Ain't that the truth? Speaking of phone numbers, in November of 2019, during the welfare check, the officers were talking to Chad and Lori and Alex and it was said that Chad acted as if he didn't know Lori very well and stated he didn't know her phone number, which is interesting um, because they had married three weeks before that. And it's funny because Chad said he didn't know Lori's phone number, but from the sounds of this love letter, he knew her number forward and backwards, don't you think? Also, P.S., Lori listed Chad in her phone as Bubby, B-U-B-B-Y. Let's painfully continue on. That was the end of chapter one. Now we start chapter two. James sadly walked to his car after watching Elena disappear down the hallway, but he couldn't deny their connection and his absolute attraction to her. She still seemed way out of his league, but he nervously sent her a text before driving to his hotel. A minute passed, then two, without a response. He kicked himself for thinking he ever had a chance with her. Then his phone buzzed. Elena had texted back. His heart soared, and over the next few hours, they texted back and forth dozens of times. He knew she was staying at home in Tokerville, and he desperately wanted to drive there and whisk her back to the hotel for a night of reconnection and romance. He twice got redressed during the night to go see her, but the spirit gently said, have patience, everything will work out as it's supposed to. Or, hey Chad, you're married, remember? How about that's what the spirit said? They finally stopped texting at around 4 a.m. and when he closed his eyes to sleep, he was taken again to their previous life together. The intense passion of their lovemaking was a sight to behold. He knew it would be difficult, but he could be patient if it meant he could experience that type of love just once in his life. As he lay in the hotel bed, it was as if her spirit had joined him. They wrapped around each other and kissed gently, then intensely, and the emotions they shared were not of this world. I don't know about you, but I could see Chad pretending to make out on the bed, like pretending Lori's with him right there. Just, I don't know, it just seems like he would do something like that. 
Ames woke up in the hotel room feeling happier than he had in his entire life. It felt like he and Elena had fit together perfectly in every way. He rolled over to kiss her, but then reality struck. She was actually more than 20 miles away in Tokerville with her Arizona friends. He texted her and she quickly responded. He deeply regretted not going to be with her the night before. It was as if he already knew the taste of her lips and his hands knew every curve of her body. He knows his dreams were somehow real and that they were actually traveling to each other in a higher dimension. He hungered for her in ways he didn't think were possible. The voice was right, Elena was going to change his life forever. She sure was. He packed his suitcase and began driving north on the freeway. As each mile passed, James could feel Elena's spirit beckoning for him to join her. As he approached the Tokerville exit, it took every ounce of willpower to keep driving on the freeway. His attraction to her was beyond magnetic. He felt their souls were two halves of an eternal union. Tears filled his eyes as he passed the freeway exit. He desperately yearned to embrace her and tell her he deeply loved her, as crazy as that sounded. But he knew he would be seeing her three weeks later at a conference in Arizona. It seemed like an eternity away, but he sensed it would be a very significant weekend for them. He already was crazy about her, and his feelings of admiration and affection for her would only grow more intense and wonderful. Side note, this November conference was November 16th and 17th of 2018, and Charles was away that weekend, and Chad stayed over. I'll get to that in a minute. Also, it seems like Chad needed to up his game a little bit and, and write this for Lori and send it to her in July. Just my opinion. During his long drive home, James was able to text back and forth with Elena. And it was clear they were extremely compatible and shared the same interests. It felt like talking to a long distance best friend. When he arrived home, he searched the internet for anything about her, but there was nothing. She was a fascinating mystery that he wanted to spend the rest of eternity with. At the end of his drive, she suggested that they talk on the phone the next day. He was thrilled at the thought of hearing her voice again. He was falling more madly in love by the minute. How's the food? Is it staying down? Anyone need a break? When James heard her voice that Monday morning, the euphoria he f had felt Saturday came rushing back strongly. They talked for two hours, but it seemed to be only minutes. He was obsessed with her and couldn't get enough. Note, it was a Monday, Tammy would be at work. During that first phone conversation with Elena, James realized she already had a strong understanding of many truths he had been taught regarding how the universe really worked. The lounge fire, or is it loin fire, and obsession with each other had no real explanation unless they truly had a spiritual connection before this life. He was able to help clarify many of the promptings and impressions she had felt in recent years. She knew she had lived on earth before and James was able to clarify when. They had been married before on this earth and other times on a previous earth. Their love truly spanned the universe and eons of time. He knew the Lord had brought them together again for a crucial mission that only they could accomplish as a united couple. This makes me think about Chad being involved in the killing of Charles and being there. During the next week, they spoke every day for at least an hour, but often longer. They hungered to know everything about each other. This was a new experience for James to open up and share the true feelings of his heart, but he knew he could trust her completely. The bond between them was intense, and only the vast distance between them kept their passion for each other from roaring into a blazing inferno. She quickly became his best friend, or better said, two best friends had reunited, and their prior love was now ignited again in a wonderful, heavenly way. As November began, James and Elena had talked on the phone every day since last seeing each other. He was extremely impressed with her intelligence, personality, and subtle humor that made him laugh more than he had in this lifetime. She was a complete delight to talk to, and the highlight of his day was when he could hear her magical voice. It was so familiar to him, and it actually healed and soothed his heart and soul. They would both attend the same event in mid-November, and it seemed like that day would never arrive. Each day, they opened their hearts to each other a little more. James knew he could trust her with the mysteries of the universe that had been revealed to him. He knew they had been married before, and they had been close friends with the Savior when he lived in Jerusalem. James had served in an important position in the Lord's church, and Elena had been his beloved spouse and best friend. Their relationship was now meant to continue in this lifetime. In Jerusalem, James and 
Elena had enjoyed tremendous intimacy, uncle husband. Their physical desire for each other was unmatched and they were for fortunate that they could be alone morning, noon, and night and they seized every chance to passionately express their love to each other. They simply could never get enough even after many years of marriage. Everyone knew they were crazy about each other and they were a wonderful example of how spouses should cleave together in love and unity. James had visions of how they would happily and joyfully pleasure each other in his office. Spicy warning again. They had, and not the good kind, they had two favorite positions that particularly bonded them together. Nothing meant more to James than holding Elena in his arms and unifying their bodies in perfect synchronization. Here comes another manipulation. As James and Elena talked on the phone, he tried to delicately describe their connection to each other and he was delighted that she believed him. He also shared that they had been married other times in a previous world and she accepted that information as well. James was overjoyed to have these memories restored to him because he truly loved her with all his heart. He knew they were meant to be married again and completed important missions together before the second coming. Now remember, he also did, uh, along with the rubric, Chad did seven important missions to accomplish together with Lori. He was ecstatic that she was receiving confirmation of these things as well. As they talked on the phone, the spiritual connection was so intense that it also produced physical desires and it was as if their spirits were making love despite the great distance between them. Is this phone sex? James knew his spirit was visiting her during those conversations. He also became aware that his spirit world would visit her at night and they would wrap around each other in a sensual embrace. Don't forget about the portal, or as I call it, the portal potty. Kissing her was so wonderful and real, and he knew that the next time they saw each other, he needed to kiss her. This is so overkill. No pun intended. He wouldn't be able to resist holding her. He was absolutely in love with her in every way. By the time the conference arrived, James and Elena had become very close through their phone conversations, but he desperately needed to see her again. She agreed to pick him up at the airport and to take him to his hotel. He was extremely nervous, worried that the spark they had felt earlier might not be there. But as she arrived at the airport and he opened the car door, his heart nearly burst at the sight of her smile. She was stunningly gorgeous. And as they gripped each other's hands, the electricity was tangible. The love between them was powerful and real. The hotel was only a short distance away and he invited her into the room. They were soon standing alone in the room and he put his arm around her and looked into her gorgeous blue eyes. They hungered for each other. And he leaned forward and fulfilled a promise he had made to her a few days earlier. He gently kissed her tender lips and the same heavenly electricity filled his entire body. Here we get to the more spicy bits. The passionate magic they had felt many centuries earlier came surging back powerfully. James moved to the couch and Elena straddled him effortlessly as if they had done this thousands of times before. She fit perfectly on him and they pressed their loins tightly against each other. The feeling was exquisite. And they both smiled and moaned at the sensations passing between them. They were still fully clothed, but the intensity of the intimacy was undeniable. James felt the powerful desire to bless Elena at the time. And as they stayed in that favor position, he moved his hands to her head and began to cleanse and purify each part of the bo her body. He could feel the pains and troubles she had endured throughout her life being removed from her soul and being taken outside and destroyed. James' hands worked their way down her body and lingered briefly on her beautiful breasts. She truly had the body of a goddess, and he was experiencing an indescribable mix of physical and spiritual ecstasy. He soon concluded the cleansing of her body from head to toe, then filled her body with a balm of light and love. James could see the happiness in her eyes and instinctively their mouths came together again. The fire was burning strongly with them both, and as their kissing grew more intense, he gently said, I love you, Elena. Those words sparked a frenzy within them. Their tongues effortlessly entwined and their hips gyrated in a smooth, erotic rhythm. Two lovers, long separated, were finally united in heavenly bliss. After a few minutes of excitement, pleasure, and fun on the couch, James and Elena both felt compelled to change into more comfortable clothing. James out in some athletic shorts and a blue shirt, and Elena put on a stunning black top and tight leggings. The top revealed just enough, but not too much, and James was overjoyed at the sight. 
Now, wait a minute. Did Lori have a change of clothes when she got to the hotel? That's interesting. James took her in his arms and they smiled at each other. The vibration in the room was intense and their hearts reached out to each other in a glorious reunion. James gently touched the sides of Elena's breast and he was in ecstasy. She stood on her tiptoes and gave him a sensual kiss that sent electricity throughout his body. I think we get the picture, Chad. They moved toward the bed and were quickly entwined around each other. She was so beautiful, loving, and enchanting that James could hardly breathe. They were both aroused but knew there were limitations on what could occur that night. Plus, you're married. But they kissed for nearly an hour and pressed against each other tightly. Toward the end of the evening, Elena laud I guess supposed to be say laid on her stomach at the end of the bed and James caressed her fabulous body he grasped her perfect bottom with both hands and she expressed how much she loved that we know that for sure because we saw Chad groping her in the uh, storage unit in October right before Tammy was killed she soon sat up and straddled him again as they passionately kissed farewell they knew they would see each other again in the morning, but the separation seemed too long. But they knew that the long wait to find their eternal match had come to an end, and James was overjoyed beyond description. James and Elena had agreed to visit the temple the following morning. She returned to the hotel room, and after additional romance on the couch, they calmed their nerves enough to give each other a blessing. As James placed his hands on her head, he connected with Elena's true eternal self. He knew he was in the presence of an exalted goddess who had returned to earth to perform a special mission. This mission included being with him and they would progress together as translated beings. The full plan wasn't yet completely clear to him, but the immense power radiating from her confirmed his belief that she was among the greatest woman in the universe. She then gave him a tremendous blessing that helped him realize how much she truly loved him and wanted to be with him forever. He was deeply humbled that such an incredible woman regarded him so highly. His heart burned as she blessed him and he had glimpses come to his mind of not only their life in Jerusalem, but even as a couple on a previous earth. He knew they had been eternal companions for eons and that their love was beyond celestial. They embraced following the blessings and the emotions they felt were a mixture of eternal bliss and celestial desire. The sexual chemistry was undeniable, but the spiritual unity was a glorious bonus for them both. They had only known each other for three weeks, but two lonely, misunderstood souls had finally found their best friend that they could trust and confide in. They arrived at the temple and they both felt they should do ceilings together. They were soon seated in a ceiling room facing each other. Elena looked so stunning while she smiled at him. She seemed calm while he felt quite nervous. Their opportunity soon came to kneel across the altar from each other. And as the sealer pronounced those sacred words, James and Elena knew that they were now sealed as husband and wife for eternity. This is a giant no-no. As the earthly sealing was taking place, a similar scene involving their spirits was happening on a higher plane where they kissed and unified their souls. They knew they had just begun a new journey together that was eternal and never ending. After the sealing, they went to lunch together and they felt so comfortable together. Everything felt so right. James could look into her eyes forever until he was gently kissing her and telling her how much he loved her. Even when they held hands, there was a powerful vibration that exceeded the telestial world. They attended the conference, but their thoughts were completely focused on each other. James gave a talk that was well received and sparked great interest in his books. Elena joined him at the selling table and they sold more than 359 books within a couple of hours, but they, all they really wanted was to slip away and express their love to each other. Here we go, hitting spicy again. They went to dinner with some friends, but afterward they were able to find some time alone. They drove to a secluded area and slipped into the back seat. Elena was wearing a pair of incredibly sexy jeans, and as she straddled James in the back seat, he once again grasped her fantastic bottom. She pushed him back into a reclining position and their loins fit perfectly together. And I'm sure they were on fire. They kissed passionately and rhythmically pulsated against each other. Their love was intense and undeniably real. James was now madly, crazily in love with her and it was so wonderful to know she felt the same way about him. One powerful moment happened earlier that day when Elena was listening to another speaker while James stayed at the table, but he thought he had heard Elena say, come stand behind me. He went into the room and saw her standing against a wall. He moved behind her and they discreetly touched. After a few minutes, he checked his phone and saw she had texted him that very sentence at the stone he heard her voice. It was a wonderful testament that they were already communicating with each other on a higher level. They helped clean up 
the conference and Elena graciously allowed James to stay into a spare bedroom at her home that night. They visited with other friends until after midnight, then they all went to bed. That's when that gathering happened at Lori's house while Charles was away on, um, on business. James anxiously hoped Elena would join him in the spare room. It took a while for everyone to settle in their beds, but once the house quieted down, James opened his door slightly and saw the wondrous sight of Elena approaching the room. They locked the door behind her and quickly got under the covers. He was wearing his athletic shorts to make him look athletic, and she was wearing tight, thin leggings and a loose top. They clung to each other and kissed desperately, hungrily. James placed his hands under her top and caressed her splendid breasts. She moaned happily and wrapped her legs around his waist. Note, sounds a little bit like Lori already had lots of practice because she did that to her brother uh, at the family home, meaning Lori and Alex's parents' home, as described as Alex's first ex-wife. She would hop up on Alex, wrap her legs around him, and bounce up and down, it was said, mimicking you know, intercourse. Only two things, layers of material separated their loins. God, I hate that word. And they could feel each other's most intimate body parts in detail. The intensity and spiritual vibration exceeded anything either one of them had ever felt before. They knew their spirits were actually intimately joined together and it felt like they had left the telestial roar world. Elena soon got on top of James and the rhythmic ecstasy continued for several more minutes. Toward the end, they both removed their tops and they pressed their bodies together skin on skin. They fit together perfectly and their kisses were deep and frenzied. Their desire for each other was beyond compare. Okay, now I think this morning's breakfast is coming up. As the reunion in the spare room came to a conclusion, Raphael, which is supposed to be James, but he interchanged them here, Raphael knew Elena was his perfect match. They longed to stay entwined together, but it would be best to separate and get some rest. But by 6 a.m., James couldn't stand to be away from her any longer. He slipped into her bedroom and stood at her bedside. She was unbelievably gorgeous, and he greatly desired to join her in the bed and continued the previous night's activities. But there were other guests in the house who weren't yet aware of their sizzling love for each other. So he gently touched her shoulder to awaken her. Her eyes opened, then she reached up and grabbed his arms and to pull him into the bed. He smiled, realizing she wasn't fully awake and had likely been dreaming of him. He simply whispered that he loved her and hoped she would go walking with him through the neighborhood. James and Elena had enjoyed a walk together the previous morning along the quiet streets of her gated community. Lori had a gated community. The central attraction between them had been intense and they had touched shoulders and held hands as they walked. They were like magnets that couldn't be separated. She had worn exercise leggings that drove him crazy with desire. The leggings emphasized her perfectly sculpted bottom and it took all of his willpower not to pull her to him and grasp that bottom firmly and powerfully with both hands while kissing her passionately. I think Chad's a butt man. They went walking again that next morning. Unfortunately, a friend invited herself along, Melanie Gibb, but James and Elena were still completely engrossed in each other. He had to catch a flight home later that morning, but he was able to give Elena a special blessing before departing. As he placed his hands on her head, he felt their spirits connect with a surge of power. At that moment, his only desire in life was to be with her as always through eternity, and that desire was continued to intensify. During the blessing, he was shown the great missions they would perform together. He knew this was an eternal union that would forever change the world. Tears filled his eyes to be in the presence of his holy goddess, and he was nearly overcome by the spirit as he sensed her true place in the universe as a majestic archangel. Then the investigator talks and says, in reading this story, the dates mentioned and the story in general were consistent with how Lori and Chad met and started their new relationship. In a follow-up message from Lori to Chad, she indicated that she loved their story. I was wondering if uh, what her response was, but they didn't put that in there. Would have loved the details on that. Oh yes, Chad, more, more. Continuing to re review records, I observed numerous text messages between Lori and Chad in which they were fighting off evil spirits that were attaching themselves to others. Chad would often score people for Lori and talk about their propensity for being influenced by intruders. The following is a sample of his, this rationale as observed on July 22nd and the 23rd. Chad says there are only 272 threes left and none of them have occupied a body before. They are down to their last reserves. I'm glad I caught Elroy. I feel he was aiming to hide out and then get into JJ. 
What do you think that means? Let me know in the comments below. Now I'm not done. Oh no, there's more. Chad texts Lori and says, Tonight I figured out who I feel like. I'm a grown-up version of Harry Potter who has to live with the Dudleys in this little space under the stairs. Every few weeks I get to escape and have amazing adventures with my goddess lover. But then I have to return to my place under the stairs feeling trapped, but I sense permanent freedom is coming. Interesting here that he says every few weeks I get to escape. Because I would like to know how many times since that October, since he met her, and in that next year, how many times he went to go see Lori. That's important. And I want to know when he visited Lori right before Charles died, during Charles died, or right after. I know he did right after, but I wonder if it was a few weeks before that or around the time. I've always wondered that. Maybe they can't uh, actually pinpoint it. So about a month later in August, Lori is a little bit ticked off at Chad and she says, you should give all of your love and your attention to your wife and family. I'm just a distraction. Go have fun with your family. I really do want you to. I just can't be in the way anymore. If things change, we can talk, but we have nothing until things change anyways. Chad must have flipped his lid on that. I mean, he'd probably have to write another chapter just to get her on a good books on that. But a few months after that, on October 5th, he messages Lori and says, Hello, sweet angel. Big news about Tammy. Please let me know if you're awake and can talk. I love you. Now, the day before this text, Chad sent Tammy to go see her family out of town. And he says, Not fully sure of the timing for removal, but once her actions verify the differences, I don't want to wait. And I think Tammy, I believe Tammy found out that there was something going on. And her behavior was a little different before she died. So I wonder if Chad was like, yep, there's a zombie. And she called, um, he called her Viola. He said uh, Tammy had been taken over by a demonic entity named Viola. And then we know Tammy died. So there is his long verbal diarrhea. And this is, besides being disgusting, this is super sad. Uh, he's married to Tammy, Charles was married to Lori, Charles gets killed, Tammy gets killed, they're screwing around, and Chad has to puff out his chest and make him look better than he is, um, and he thinks, you know, he's met this huge goddess, they're just like, oh my god, she's just amazing, and he has to up his game, so he's sending her all these love letters and wait, 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 I'll send a rubric and I'll send this and that and she'll think that I'm something else. Well, Chad, you are something else. And I wonder what your children think of you now. I know they thought he was innocent. I wonder, once these things are starting to come out, they start reading these things, they have to start facing the reality that um, this is some screwed up stuff and people were killed over a rubric and some very, very, very off the beaten path religion or secret society like I have video below. But I would like to know your thoughts on this. It's just disgusting at the timing of it, the days following his death and all this. Now, Lori ordered uh, the rings right away for them, but then there was some sort of thing where the owner from the store that they bought them from, they were on vacation or something, so they had to cancel the order and then they bought the, the rings in October on Charles' credit card. So I hope you got through that without puking. Uh, when I first read it, uh, it was, I actually burst out laughing. I couldn't even film the video. I had to wait some time so that I could read it because it was just that ridiculous. And uh, I don't know, I feel, I feel so sad that all this was going on behind Tammy's back and Charles's back. And now Lori and Chad's lives are sure, they have sure changed and they're sitting in jail. We will find out uh, on December 2nd when the trial dates are, so stay tuned for that, which as of the timing of this video will be tomorrow. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, feel free to loin fire the heck out of this. I'm gonna make an emoji on that as well and uh, Maybe you can add that too in the comments once that's finished. <laughs> Chad Daybell's loin fire. Terrible. Let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please like and please share. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.